Welcome to Unshakable Grace, where faith meets everyday life. I'm Pastor Mark Carlson of Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Kettering, Ohio. I'm thrilled to embark on this journey of inspiration, growth, and unwavering faith with you. Join us as we explore the boundless depths of God's grace that sustains us through our trials, empowers us in our successes, and transforms our hearts. Each episode, we'll dive into biblical insights, real life stories, and practical wisdom that remind us of the unshakable foundation we have in Christ. So tune in, open your heart, and let's experience the unshakable grace that shapes our lives. It's time to dive in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I bid you a good day. I want us to make our beginning for this unshakable grace, remembering who we are as the baptized, blood-bought, bound for heaven, sons and daughters of the Lord, as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so as we're in... 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 10 for a devotional thought. Let me read those words first of all. As Paul is in the resurrection chapter of the Bible saying, verse 1 and following, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they. So we preach, and so you believed. In the hearing of these words, in the reading of these words, it appears to me that we have the early beginnings of a creed, of a confession, credo, the Latin for I believe, and creeds, the ecumenical creeds as we have them, which are the Athanasian Creed, the Apostles' Creed, and the Nicene Creed. These creeds that the early church put together in the third and fourth centuries are preceded by creedal statements such as these that we find in the New Testament. I would venture to say that one of the earliest creeds is also found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. No one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. I would also venture to say there is an even shorter creed than Jesus is Lord that we might consider, and that is Jesus Christ. Initially, Jesus the Christ, well, the article goes away, and we reference him as Jesus Christ. His name and his title, Jesus the Savior, who is the Anointed One. Creedal statements like these are powerful and they give us the opportunity to confess who Jesus Christ is. And in the Trinitarian confessions, we also are focusing in on the second person of the Holy Trinity. Between the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit lies the Lord Jesus Christ. So, What Child Is This is a beautiful hymn of confession, as I see it. And it says, What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch are keeping? 
This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Why lies he in such mean a state, where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian fear for sinners here, the silent word is pleading. Nails, spear, shall pierce him through, the cross be born for me, for you. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise the song on high, the virgin sings her lullaby. What child is this? A great confessional hymn. And there are others, of course. Hymns can serve as creedal hymns, confessions of faith. We all believe in one true God is a Lutheran hymn that is used as a creedal hymn him a confession of faith. They can either be Trinitarian or they can be Christocentric, focusing in on Jesus as the Lord or the Father as Creator, the Son as Redeemer, and the Spirit as Sanctifier. But what child is this is a beautiful hymn, a creedal hymn of confession. This Sunday at our church, the children's and congregational worship service together is going to be with the focus on what child is this. And I would say, when you know what child this is, you know better what child you are. What child am I? I understand my identity when I understand who Jesus Christ is and who the Father and Holy Spirit are along with the Lord Jesus Christ. Your identity and mine wrapped up so closely. The I am who I am and Jesus saying that he is the I am, the light of the world, the way, the truth, the life, the good shepherd, the gate. I am the vine, you are the branches. All of these I am statements found in John's Gospel point him uh, to be and direct us to see he is the I am who I am as the second person of the Holy Trinity. Prefigured, pre-shadowed, pre-announced uh, to us in the Old Testament times as the angel of the Lord or the angel of Yahweh, the angel of his presence, the second person of the Holy Trinity took on human flesh conceived in the womb of Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit, true God and true man, uh, assuming the human nature into himself because the divine nature does not become the 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 man. God does not become man in that sense, but rather God brings into this union the nature of humanity, two natures in the one person of Jesus Christ. Now, the creed expresses this state of humiliation so beautifully, and then the state of exaltation as well. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. State of humiliation. Then he's made alive by the Holy Spirit, so uh, he is uh, descending into hell to proclaim his victory, as Luther said, to thumb his nose at the forces of hell. So the state of exaltation flows. Jesus, he is descending into hell to declare his victory. On the third day he rises again, he ascends into heaven, he sits at the right hand of God the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. So this gospel that Paul is referencing here, this gospel which is preached, received, st stood upon, and which brings salvation that we're holding fast to, <laughs> but is also holding on to us as well. Believed in victory, not in vain. This is of first importance. Well, 
why Paul says this is of first importance, not that it is first among many secondary and tertiary things, but this is first in its importance, that you know Christ crucified and Christ resurrected, and you're believing and you're trusting in him, and you're confessing him in the way you are not only speaking the words of confession, I believe therefore I confess, but you're also living it out, not just with your, your words, but your deeds as well. And so the biblical and doctrinal and spiritual and eternal importance of these words is here. If you don't believe in Christ crucified and resurrected, you have no hope, you have no life in you. But because of what Christ has done, I know who I am. You may know who you are. Your identity lies in Christ. You are a child of God that he created in his own image. He has redeemed in the giving of his son Jesus for you. And he is doing this work of you becoming more like Christ as you're being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit's going to eventually do that work of raising these mortal bodies that we might experience heaven with new spiritual bodies that God has prepared for us. So the, the dead in Christ will rise first, followed by them that are alive. Well, what are we going to do in the meantime? In the we meanwhile, you have to know these are mean times. And it is a meanwhile that we're in until the time comes for Christ's return when we're taken into the glories of heaven. Oh, what child is this? What child am I? May you understand what child Jesus is so you can understand what child you are and that you are a creation of God recreated in Christ Jesus. And as Paul says so beautifully in his letter to the Corinthian congregation in first letter and the second, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Pray with me. Thank you, Lord, for being with us in this time of devotion and prayer. What child is this? It is a beautiful creedal hymn confessing who Jesus is. But it also leads us to understand what child I am. What child I am. What child I am and what children we are. Uh, what love you have lavished on us that we should be called the children of God, Lord. Bless us and be with us as we live out our identity. It's not human beings and human doings, uh, but more so we are understanding the being flowing into the doing, the, who I am and what I do. Bless us and be with us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.